Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, welcome to a coding Q&A. And thank you very much, Redstone Games, for those 75 bits. And for all the other supports. And Andrew Lane, with the 10 bits, who says good morning. <laughs> I literally walked away from my computer for like five minutes. And a lot has happened. Um, including Revive Newt with the 10 gifted subs. Thank you very much, Revive Newt. I'll acknowledge all of the, all of the support events that have happened. Um, welcome, everyone. So, uh, in this show, I'm going to attempt to answer coding questions, coding-related questions. Um, as you can see, there are already 396 questions. You can keep asking questions. This number is just going to go higher. I'm going to do my best uh, to answer as many as I can. This is going to be a shorter stream today because um, I have work things. So, we're going to do an abridged version of the hello, right? <laughs> What's up, Julian? We've been expecting you. So we're going to say hi to everybody. We're going to get started. Let's let's get right into it. Uh, first of all, we have some new followers. Thank you very much to Khan for the follow and uh, Vladis. Much appreciated. Uh, Disty, thank you. Thanks for being here. It's Purple Monkey. Thank you for the follow. Kern, much appreciated. Webnet, hello. And Fine Monter, thank you all for the follows. Um, <laughs> and Mac has ordered me to hydrate. Cheers, Mac. Thanks for being here. Oh, Marco. Thank you for the 100 bits. <laughs> Funny you should ask that, Paper CSGO. Uh, who says, do you have a tutorial on folder structure for a full stack app? Um, very soon. Uh, Olaf, thank you for the gifted sub. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and also, Julian, thank you for the 50 bits. But uh, I, I'll just say soon. Keep an eye on YouTube. There's something coming. I'll say that. And Pablo, thank you for the hydrate as well. Cheers. What do I think of the Twitch new Twitch reply feature? I don't like that you can only reply to one message. Um, now, I know that's like nitpicking, but it's like, if you're going to let us thread, why can't we thread everything? Right? Right? I don't know. Thank you all for the supports. 13 subs, 235 bits. Wow. Wow. Um, first of all, shout out to, uh, Mafia Capone, Al Mafia Al Capone, who subbed with Twitch Prime when I was not streaming. Thank you, Mafia. Uh, Rogue Soul with the four-month Twitch Prime resub. Thank you, Rogue Soul, who says hello. Uh, Revive Newt with the ten gifted subs. Thank you very much, Revive Newt. Timmy Connect with the, um, two-month resub. Thank you very much. Redstone Games with the 75 bits. Andrew Lane with the 10 bits. Marco with the 100 bits. Olaf with the gifted sub. And Julian with the 50 bits. Thank you all for your supports. I skipped your highlighted messages. I, I, look, wait, why doesn't this show highlighted messages? And Unfair is also gifted a sub. Thank you very much, Unfair. I mean, I'm the one who wrote this thing, but I need to add highlighted message to it. What, what's up, Dubby? Thank you for the hydrate. I keep reaching for my cup. I'm gonna put my yerba mate in my cup. Give sub. <laughs> Cheers. Okay. I'm going to go through these rewards, but then I'm going to do some things. I think what Emphy is asking about is the fact that I have not highlighted or I have not added their whitelist to their domain. Thank you much, very much, Dave Hall Online, for the three month reset, who says hello. Hello, hello. Thank you, Debbie, for that hydrate. Uh, PCM with the stretch. We're just getting started. Oh, you had an idea. Okay, I'll, I'll find it, though. We'll find it. <laughs> and Lucy, thank you for the posture check as well. Stand up straight, everyone. And Slick, cheers. Thank you for the hydrate. All right. Here it is. Do a quick answer session where you answer the quickly answered questions. You mean like a speed run? A question and answer speed run? Please clarify, Envy, but I like I like your idea. Were there other other things too? I don't know. I don't know. We got a few more follows. Welcome to Dudio. Thanks for the follow. Captain Caption, thanks for the follow. And Rifkita, thank you for the follow as well. Um, Rifkita said they found me on YouTube. Very good. Thank you for being here. Yes, no questions? Oh, oh like, actually, like, oh, I see. Just do a quick scroll. A scroll and answer all the questions as fast as I can. I'll do that. But let's say hi to everyone first. Hello, Sven. Uh, if you'd like me to acknowledge me, acknowledge you, 
which if you would like me to acknowledge you, you can say uh, these things in the chat. If you say hi, hello, hey, morning, afternoon, evening, uh, coding hi-yo, vo hi or good day. Good day, mate. If you say any of those things, I will acknowledge you. Uh, unfortunately, I may not be able to acknowledge everyone today because we're on a time crunch. Good day, doc. Uh, I'm going to add a timer for... Three minutes and 30 seconds. I think that's three minutes and 30 seconds. If you'll all just bear with me. This is a, this is a good amount of time to just, to just, you know, just say hi. To appreciate all the people that are here. <laughs> uh, Roger Voth, uh, the first person to say hi, that was uh, in my overlay, I guess. <laughs> but welcome, Roger Voth. Good morning. Hello, Greeny. What's up with that? Um, Ard Ardpala and Feistrand and Awaited. Welcome. Hello, Slake. And Sequel Gordster, who says, good morning, CJ and friends. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you as well. Hello, world of Paul. What's up, funny dude? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> What's up so much, Clark? And Aries Boga, hey, how's it going? What's up, Coding Pasta? And I Satisfied and Procrastinator Mastermind. Thank you for being here. Marco, how's it going? Hello, Recept1982. That's a new name. You might have been here, but I haven't seen you before. <laughs> What's up, Binary King? And Andrew Lane and Monoloito. And hello, Holsty. Good day. Good day. <laughs> Deja Sej with the hundred bits who says good morning all. Thank you very much, Deja Sej, for those bits. Smoky Dev, what's up? Hello, Dev M and Mark and Lakshman. How's it going? Hello, Jackie Lente. Unfair. Vohio. Ohio. What's up, Avi? W YouTube, the She Boss. How's it going? What's up, Redstone Games? And Jonas. And Miss Code Rocks. Uh, what's up, Aaron Zonish? Hello. Hello, Shines Love. How's it going? What's up, Mo Said? And Danish. Um, S Fox, I realize you're probably already asleep, but thank you for dropping by, and uh, we'll see you next time. Hello, Lucy. Welcome, welcome. What's up, Satu? And Helion, and Nestra, and Dan, and Imod, and uh, Don. Hello, hello. What's up, Zolo, and Blue Finks, and Kishore, and Karate Wump, and Reekster, Volchen. Hello, fellow dev. Hello, hello. <laughs> Howard says, you're late. You're right. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. I'll say that. What's up, Howard? <laughs> hello, Nookie Poo. Revive New. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Uh, I guess for you it's evening. I don't know how time works. Hello, uh, Atchitox. What's up? What's up? Hello, BM Sickle and Kahira. And it's the Purple Monkey. Welcome. Hello, Kabanks and Ploosh and Seawok and Jeff and PCM and Koozie. Welcome. Hello, Infy. What's up, Turtle Monkey, who says, just saying hi before I head to work. Have a good stream. Thank you for dropping by, Turtle Monkey. We'll see you. Hello, Un uh, Unaleta and Kern and Dudos. What's up, Cheo and Mr. Mandula and Shaggy and John and uh, Lutrez? Hello, hello. What's up, uh, someone amazing? Thank you for being here. Hello, Luthenberg and Rasha and Bugalo and MGP Hayes and Procrastinator Mastermind with 100 bits. Thank you very much for the bits. <laughs> Luba Bear, how's it going? Hello, Sane, Ma uh, Sane Master. And hello, Shi.moe. How's it going? What's up, Synthetic Tree Leaf and Mean Wandi and Julian, who says hello. Come in, Mr. CJ. We've been expecting you. Well, thank you, Julian. Uh, what's up, Cons Dave? Good morning, good morning. I need to reply to your, your Discord message. I'm a, I'm a busy person. And also, I'm starting to take a break from Discord on the weekends. More about that later, but what's up, Dave? <laughs> Hello, Walid. Uh, what's up, Alana? And Pablo, and Ojas, and I am, and Maya Sin, and Abby, and Rifkita, who says, I found you on YouTube and I love your video. Oh, I read that earlier, but thank you. Thank you for finding me on YouTube. What's up, Neo and Sven and Doc? Good day. Hello, uh, Tracino and Vignesh and DS Legends and Giza and Castle and Torfies and Blue Monster and Hihab and Nagi Out and Deja Sej and Elko and Bruno and Humida, who says, hello, Mr. Streamer. Hello. Uh, what's up, Hassan? and the Oxty and Dakrai and Captain Caption and Dizzy and the GTA and GM Awesome and T1H2H... Uh, uh, 2H, oh, <laughs> we're out of time, but I, I'm really close. I'm close to saying hi to everyone. Hello, Abdelash, Masalera, and Finicky Deg, who said, just here for a quick hi, then we'll be listening in the background. Nice. Well, thank you for dropping by, and uh, now we're now we're your background noise. What's up, Legendary, and George Solar, and Taru, and Function Jarvis, and Curdo, and Same Math, and Antoine, and Mr. Suttonman, who says, it's been a while. It has. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Hello, Hokey. Greg, how's it going? Anonymous has gifted a sub to she.moe. Very nice. Thank you very much, Anonymous. What's up, Aknot? And Walpolia uh, and Pinky TV and Dewanch. We've done it, everyone. We have said hi to all the peoples. All the peoples. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness, what's up, Brandon? Yeah, so I streamed on, uh, hey, hey, same, same math. Thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Um, but uh, shout out to Pixel Logic Dev. Um, I was on his stream on Saturday, so I didn't stream Saturday. Um, but you can look at this video here uh, to see that stream. It was basically, um, I mean, the first part of it was kind of just a, an interview with me, like a Q&A about me to get to know me. Um, but after that, we talked about the future of live streaming uh, programming and just talked about uh, live streaming and live coding and programming in general. So it's pretty fun. So check that out. Um, cool. We've got a couple follows. Thank you for being here. What's up to new life cats? Hello. And Dom Dominic, welcome to the stream. Hello, hello. And um, I kind of want to get into uh, Let's just get into it. Let's go. Let's go right now. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Um, so I think I like what Infi said is we're basically just going to scroll down and I'm going to, we're going to scroll all the way from the top to the bottom. I'm going to answer any question that I can quickly. And then we're going to go back to the top and try to answer some questions that involve like code. So let's get it. Uh, let's go and do this one. The she boss says, does your company implement agile scrum methodology? If so, can you talk a bit, a bit about it? Yep. Uh, I mean, and so I've talked about this before in, in the real world, um, there are so many different interpretations of what it is to be agile and so many different interpretations of how you should run things and, and all that. So yes, we do agile like things. Uh, we have user stories. Uh, we have uh, basically one and a half week sprints, meaning uh, every one and a half weeks we deliver, we, pr we do a demo, we have a retro, and then we go into the next sprint. Um, we have uh, stand-ups, depending on the project and the team size, it may not necessarily be daily stand-ups, but we do actually do stand-ups. Um, that's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do agile things for sure. <laughs> uh, but we, yeah, but and, and, but what I'm saying in terms of it not being like fully Scrum or fully agile, like we actually don't have a Scrum master. Um, typically, like the PM or, or maybe even, um, yeah, the PM usually runs uh, stand-up. So yeah. Why not an integer number of weeks? Uh, it just works out that way. I guess it might be closer to two weeks. I think it's, but I think it's closer to one and a half. It depends. Also, I'll say it depends on on the project too. So we are a consultancy. We do a lot of different projects. So yeah. Um, thank you for your question, the she boss. Right. What else? Simple introduction to regex. That's not easy. <laughs> um, when will we get to know that our code is completely wet? I'm not familiar with the wet acronym. I'll have to look it up. And actually, here's the thing. If you have asked a question before, type exclamation mark here in the chat. And thank you very much, uh, NG Eddie, for that Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries, uh, the she boss. Yeah, I work at a software consultancy here in uh, Denver, Colorado. Luckily, I have a HearBot. Hey, careful with that Hear command. <laughs> Uh, Atchi Talks says, I'm building an MO web app and I'm trying to figure out the best way to stream data to and from a Node.js server. I've used Socket.io, write everything twice. Oh. I've never heard that acronym. That's interesting. <laughs> um, I've used Socket.io before, but do you have any WebSocket recommendations leaning more towards the performance of mastering client data and then syncing to clients to, uh, for stuff like live player chords and such? Yeah. Um, in my experience, I've really just only only used Socket IO, um, and that works for me. I built some very basic things uh, that that do real time com communication between all the connected clients. Um, however, I don't have any recommendations, but I will say if you search the web for like a Web Socket game server, some people have implemented some libraries that handle a lot of the things that you might be trying to solve. But I will say I don't have experience with that, so. That's that. Ho hopefully, that's helpful. Hopefully. <laughs> when you're working on the front end with API responses, do you usually convert them to your own class of that response type to have that sweet, sweet autocomplete? For example, a user class, user, and have a full name getter, for example, which combines the first and last name keys from the API JSON response, bonus points for a code example. <laughs> uh, it, it depends on the application. Um, let's take a quick stretch. If you've seen, if you watch the videos where I was building this chat overlay, we actually created interfaces for all of the API responses. Um, so that way we, we would get autocomplete. And there are some 
um, cool tools like JSON type, JSON to TS. Let's see. So you enter in some JSON. There's, I think there's there's another one we found and used. Wow. <laughs> so this like you you just you can just like paste in a JSON paste paste in a JSON response. Um, and then it generates a TypeScript class. So you see we have this interface root object with the name that must be of type string. So uh, there are other tools like this that exist. So I'll say it, it depends. <laughs> uh, if my if the app I'm working on is TypeScript, then yeah, I would I will create interfaces. I'm not just gonna have the any any type everywhere. Um, but yeah, focus mode in the queue, cool. So do I want to show an example? Not really, <laughs> not really, but uh, that is a thing that I've done before, I'll say that, but not on all apps. Like if it's a basic JavaScript app or uh, even an app that's not using TypeScript, I'll just figure out what the properties are. I don't really need the autocomplete. Yeah, and thank you, Blue. Appreciate the, the compliment. I'm ripping through these. Oh, we're, I'm trying to find one. So here's the thing, the ones that are gray, technically those people are not are not here. <laughs> so the thing is, I could do I could do a, a speed run and like try to answer these, but they're not here. And so if I answer them, then they didn't don't get to benefit from my answer, I guess. Right? Right? Yeah, no worries, uh, Nebula Razor. Um, some people will never be here. That's true. So like people have dropped by, asked a question, and they'll never come back. <laughs> You're right. The count has not go down. <laughs> uh, I'll answer this one though. Can you tell me about uh, my chair? Um, yeah. So for all the for all the new people here, if you go to GitHub.com/slash/codinggarden/slash/faqs, um, there is. Hey, Torfies, thank you for the hundred bits. There's a frequently asked question about how is your hair and your chair green? Though I'm not using a chair right now. Very obviously, I'm standing. <laughs> um. If you, if you want to remove your question, you can do exclamation mark archive followed by the question number. Uh, where is that question? If you just command F for chair, right there. There it is. How is your chair and hair green? Um, wait. I thought I... Oh, yeah, there it is. This is the question. What chair do you use? It's an Ikea Marcus. <laughs> so um, they don't sell the green one anymore, but you can get this one. And it's the, it's the same chair, it's just a different color. But uh, check out the Frequently Asked Questions. If you're new here, it's a nice little read. You can uh, learn learn about the coding garden. Please sit or I look like Coding Train. The Coding Train is a huge inspiration for me. Um, I haven't heard from him a while in a while. I hope he's doing OK. I haven't been able to tune into his stream that much. But yeah, he does this, like weatherman coding, like this. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, check out Shiftman for sure. Click click those links. Um, all right. So I'm not going to do a speed run. We're going to go to the top. If you have a question, ask the question. If you already have asked a question, type exclamation mark here. We're going to get right into it. So uh, Mitsik says, says, what is the best way to show webhook data from the back end in a React component is uh, the only way WebSockets. WebSockets are pulling. Um, so let's, let's, let's break this down. Let's break this down a little bit. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, we've talked about this before, Major Lift, where basically um, any question I answer, I should post a link to the VOD where I answered it. That way people in the future can see those answers as well. Um, I don't know. For now, just be here with me. That's it. <laughs> if you're here, you get an answer. If you're not, maybe next time. Um, real time type stuff. Yeah, so it, yeah, we have an ideas tab, and somebody has it. Uh, more than one person has had that um, idea thing. Um, okay, this is the question. And the question comes from uh, Mitzik. Thank you very much, Mitzik. Uh, what's up, Ohas? So we have a, a frequently asked question, and uh, you have asked a frequently asked question. View or react, what's better? So if you check out the frequently asked questions, type exclamation mark FAQ. Um, you'll get a link, and um, in that repo, there is that very question that will not directly answer you, but will tell you how to find the answer to that question. Thank you, Zor. Thanks for being here. Um, all right. 
Uh, Midsig says, what is the best way to show webhook data from the backend in a React component is the only way WebSockets. So really, the, the question you're trying to ask is how do we do or how do we show real time data on a web page? So for instance, like uh, data in a, a DB or like on a server changes. How can the client immediately reflect that? Right? And um, if you're familiar with WebSockets, WebSockets is one way to do that. Yes, Mitzik says yes, exactly all this. <laughs> that's, so I'll mention really quick, uh, that's one thing about being a teacher is like trying to understand the question that the student is trying to ask. Because as a beginner, I'm not saying you're a beginner, Mitzik, but as, as someone who's trying to learn things that you don't know, it's really hard to formulate a question because you don't know how to ask that question. But I think this is what, this is what they're asking. We have a web page. We want to show some real-time data. How do we do that? I guess let's do some code examples. Now, I, I will I will admit, this could take an hour, and then I'm done, and then I can't answer any more questions. But this will be fun. We'll do something. We'll do something that is real time, and uh, we'll we'll have some actual code to demonstrate it. Um, do you all approve? Type one in the chat if you just want to see this code. You don't care if it takes an hour. You want to see some code. <laughs> it's a lot of ones. Yeah, type two if you don't. If, if, it's a lot of one. We're going to go with it. Thank you all for being here with me. Thank you for not complaining. We're going to do our best. We're going to answer this question. Um, okay, let's just start off. Um, let's let's go to Wikipedia. And um, let's see. I mean, do they have an entry on WebSockets? Do they? WebSocket. Look at that. Full duplex communications. That's something we should talk about, too. <laughs> so here's the tricky part with, uh, with real time is... Uh, it, with, I'll say this: it is possible to do real time with cloud functions or with uh, serverless functions, but that's like on API, uh, AWS API Gateway, and you have to configure some things. For the most part, the idea with serverless is that they just spin up when you need them, and typically for real time communication, you need some sort of persistent communication or per persistent connection so that you can have a full duplex connection <laughs> to the server. <laughs> Um, cool. So full duplex is what we'll use to explain that. Um, yeah, it's distinct from HTTP. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, history. Under history, maybe they mentioned things. So some of the other ways of doing it are log, uh, long polling, uh, server sent events. And I want to try and show some examples of, of all of them. <laughs> Wait till answered question, unanswered questions gets to four digits. Hey, major lift. Got to be on my side. Don't, don't make me nervous. <laughs> don't, don't make me think about those kind of things. Um, okay. So uh, types of real-time communication. Um, cool. The first one, WebSockets. Now, uh, uh, if, if you're not in web development, you've probably heard of a socket, which is a connection to some remote computer. But a WebSocket is a web standard that exists in modern web browsers that allows uh, the the web browser to to have and make a persistent connection to a backend server, um, and I'll show a quick example of that. So an app we built um, uh, in December because it's called isitnewyearsday.com. <laughs> so we built this website isitnewyearsday.com. But when anybody else goes to this website, and we can look, there was somebody somebody was anticipating it. They're like they're gonna talk about isitnewyearsday.com. But if anybody else goes to this web website, um, we will see your mouse on the web page. And also, uh, if you go into the console, you can type actions dot set emoji, and then you can pass in an emoji. I'm gonna do the nerd face, and then that should change for everyone else that's on. The, that's a lot of people. <laughs> everyone else that's on the web page too. Um, you can see it's like it's not it's not super super real time because that's a whole lot of data we'd be dealing with if there were hundreds of people all on the web page and we're sending their mouse movements and location to every other client. There's a lot you have to think about when you start to scale something that's real time. So basically what this does is it takes a snapshot of the state. Yeah, it's localized. <laughs> this is incredible. My life is complete. So um, the, the, thing, the, the way that we handled it, or the way that I decided to optimize it, is that uh, every few seconds, um, the, um, the client sends a, a, a message to the server that is a history of where the mouse, their specific mouse has been. And then the server, on some interval, like maybe every one second or every half a second, 
um, takes all of the data that has been been emitted by all of the clients and updates its own internal internal state. So there's like an, a, there's a, there's a state object that basically describes where all of the mice are on the page. Um, and so then when it emits the new state, uh, front end code uses CSS transformations to like animate the position from where it was to where it will be. Um, so this uses WebSockets because the fact that people uh, can move their mouse. Yeah, Dung Hero is another one. Let's show that one too. Uh, Dung Hero Online. Um, so this is a website where the the um, the animals are, are running around. You can see to date there have been six hundred and twenty thousand dungs collected. Now I will say I'm actually very proud of this website because that like this is just an in memory number. This isn't stored in a database. Um, the fact that the server has not gone down. It's been up for like months now, uh, and as you can see, people are collecting the dungs. So it's a a massively <laughs> collaborative game where anybody that's on the web page uh, can click click the dungs and then they disappear but then the dungs also uh, appear as well but uh, this again is a shared state between all of the clients because the server um, it's I think it's a it's a floating point number in JavaScript so whatever the max max number is uh, so both of these sites are hosted on AWS and the main reason is I need a server that's up all the time um, you could technically use something like Heroku um, but you'd have to pay to make it not go to sleep. <laughs> uh, but something like AWS allows you to spin up a virtual private server. That server stays up 24-7, uh, and then you can write Node.js code that is the server that accepts connections from all of the clients. Um, cool. And here's the thing. There's just the fact that I mentioned that this website is still up and this number is in memory, there are some naughty people out there. Some naughty people are going to attempt, they're gonna try their best to bring this website down. Um, and don't do that. Uh, I will say people have tried and they have brought it down, <laughs> but we wrote code to fix that. Um, so for both of the websites, we started to add some backend code that limits the number of connections per IP address. If you have a botnet, why would you use it to take down this website? I don't know why I'm talking about this, um, but uh, I'll show yeah, I'll show you really quick the AWS uh, pricing. Um, so that Dung Hero is on a $10 server. So I pay $10 a month. It just stays up there forever. I think I have a couple of other things running there as well. Um, but yeah, for 10 bucks a month, that's the only, that's the only amount that I pay. Um, and it just stays running 24 seven. <laughs> Don't use these specific methods to break my cane. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, the other part about uh, a, I mean, this is a completely separate topic, but the other part about a virtual private server is that it's a full fledged Linux machine. So if you've never done any sort of Linux system administration, if you've never set up a Linux box, um, there's a lot you need to learn to be able to set things up this way. So Heroku, you could probably use, it's going to cost a little bit of money if you want it to stay up all the time, but you don't have to set up the server or do anything else like that. Yeah, yeah, we're paying ten dollars a month for virtual dunks. <laughs> cool, uh, and I'll show you really quick. Uh, the if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you can watch the videos where I created both of these. If you go to coding.garden/videos, uh, if you search for dung, there it is. Uh, the dung hero game was actually built in one hour. It was a part of a, a game challenge that Dev Ed put out. So you can see that here. And then, uh, is it New Year's Day? We worked on in multiple streams. Like we got the basic version working in one stream, but then I did more streams to where we worked on localization and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so you can check that out here. So you can watch me build the things, but we're gonna build something right now with with sockets to talk about real time communication. And um, I guess one thing I'll one thing I'll show you is socket IO. So this is the uh, one of the most popular libraries for doing this kind of thing in Node.js and in JavaScript. Um, it's called Socket.io. And one of the things that they do is they uh, have backwards compatibility. So if we look at can I use, we can look at WebSocket to see where it is supported. Now, it's pretty much supported everywhere. Look at this. Although even in, even IE11 supports WebSockets. Um, but uh, it used to be that not all web browsers uh, supported WebSockets. Um, it's a, it was an emerging standard. Um, but you can see that they actually have pretty good support. Yeah, yeah, look at this. <laughs> Which means you can use WebSockets in, in most places. Um, but Socket.io was created uh, to kind of um, smooth things out for browsers that did not support WebSockets. Let's take a, let's take a quick stretch. 
Opera Mini is not capable of JavaScript. <laughs> Can gRPC replace WebSockets? It, if the web browser can can support gRPC, I'm not super. I'm not familiar with gRPC. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, remote procedure calls. Mm. Typically, this is like between between two processes, right? Like two like native applications that are running, not necessarily something that's in the web browser, right? Maybe? I don't know. We'll come back to that. Um, but one of the reasons Socket.io was created was because not all browsers had the uh, had like perfect support for WebSockets. So they created this library that was a wrapper to hide some of the implementation details and allow Socket.io and real time to work uh, across the web. Um, and so one of the things, uh, Roast Toast says I'm right. Well, thank you, Roast Toast. Um, so one of the things about Socket.io is that they have fallbacks. So if the code is running in a web browser that does not support WebSockets, it will fall back to a thing called long polling. Let's look up uh, long polling. Um, push technology. Oh, server push. This is another thing to look at. So, um, so there's WebSockets, there's long polling. Um, and Squibbles. Thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Squibbles. <laughs> uh, and then... So the, 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 one, the other one I know of is uh, server sent events. And I'm actually not too familiar with this, so maybe it'll be fun to write a code example for that. Um, but in general, this is like push technology because we need to draw a diagram. We're gonna draw a diagram. Let me draw a diagram. Um, but let's see if there's a, a diagram of long pulling. Good enough. <laughs> this, is, this is a pretty good example. <laughs> Actually, I'll try to draw. I'll try to draw my own diagram. I will admit, I'm not the best. I'm not the best drawer. Facebook uses server sent events for their live video API comments and reactions. Interesting. I'll draw. I always say I'm going to draw a diagram, and that I don't end up drawing a diagram. <laughs> Um, but uh, Socket.io has a, has a good description of like what so like WebSockets are used for. It's a persistent connection. And I, I need to draw some diagrams because we need to compare and contrast this with what is not real time, right? Yeah. Um, and also, what I also wanted to show was um, uh, basically how Socket.io has fallbacks. Because, okay, so Socket.io basically... You can write code and it allows you to do real time things and it handles all the implementation details. So if a browser does not support WebSockets, it'll fall back to long pulling. If the browser doesn't support long pulling, it'll fall back to a flash plugin. Um, and actually, I don't know what the, uh, uh, I'll call this like deprecated because I mean, flash doesn't even work anymore, but um, yeah, it, it, it abstract, abstracts away the details so that you don't have to worry about all of that. Um, but flash, Adobe flash, Maybe they were able, I'm not even sure how they implemented it. Maybe it was actual sockets. It wasn't web sockets. Yeah, but uh, there's literally a flash plugin. And so uh, back when I first started using Socket.io, long time ago, um, uh, WebSocket support was not across all browsers like we see that it is here. And so I, in, in, in some cases, I actually did have to fall back to the socket, to the flash plugin, yeah. Flash first, then long polling. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That would make sense because if the if it supports flash, it's going to be a better real time connection than long polling because long polling is potentially um, more taxing on the server because it has to it has to like keep the uh, HTTP request open and then it times out and then it reopens it. But yeah, flash uses raw UDP and TCP. That that would make sense. Yep. They go, so Socket.io has. Uh, the support goes way, way back. These days, you don't technically need that library anymore. Twitch chat itself used to work via Flash plugin. Wow. <laughs> uh, I don't really have many games on tutorial or many uh, tutorials on games. I haven't been coding for that long. Yes. <laughs> I'll say it was it was probably close to ten years ago. I don't know. Yeah. If it still supports Flash, this pretty much explains why WebSockets doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and but SignalR uses behind the scenes. It uses WebSockets. Uh, so all of, I'll, I'll mention this. Um, all of the 
I'm going to show you code in Node.js in JavaScript. Um, SignalR is a .NET and C# -sharp thing, but C SignalR is like the .NET C# -sharp version of Socket.io. Socket.io is specifically for uh, Node.js and JavaScript. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, view. Fugido, Fugideo. <laughs> Thank you very much for that subscription. Um, what um, what should we build? WebRTC. Oh, you're totally right. Oh, we got we got all kinds of things. Uh, peer to peer. So let's call it uh, WebRTC. Peer to peer. But that is a persistent connection from from two clients. It's not client to server. Though technically, you could be running a peer on a server. But yeah, 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 you're totally right. Um, one hour of background info and 10 minutes of coding. <laughs> All right, uh, what, sh what should we build? Th just throw some ideas in the chat right now. I'll, I'll pick one that looks interesting. Hey, Pugic20, thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. A multiplayer snake game. Uh, the push API. Oh, that's true. Um, Agar, oh, Agar IO. What is this? It has to be something I can code in about 30 minutes. Oh, okay. This is where like the circles, you like swallow up other circles. I'm not a robot, I swear. Rock, paper, scissors with video. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Florin? Uh, we're trying to figure out what we should build that's going to be real time. We're gonna we're gonna show some examples of like, um, oh man, there's no stairs in that picture, right? <laughs> I can do this. The captcha is the game. This is not real time. This is just a captcha. Oh man, and you see the the images are getting grainy. They're like, we don't like your answers. We could do a real time tic tac toe. Yes. The tricky part is managing like. Um, having like a, a queue of players and managing like pairing two people together. We could just recode Dung Hero Online. You're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Are these cars? I'm not even going to be able to play this game because I have to do this CAPTCHA. Do the audio challenge? What's the audio? Who mentioned an audio challenge? Oh, oh. Sorry about that, everyone, <laughs> if that was really loud. Um, this one? Your computer networking may be sending automated queries. Well, my friend, um, <laughs> um, I think what will, I, uh, tic-tac-toe could be fun. I think the, the hard, so it'll be easy enough to implement tic-tac-toe. The hard part is gonna be adding like a, a lobby and pairing two people together, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a confirmed robot. <laughs> uh, that music is, is from one of these two playlists, yeah. Okay, um, can I just make a simple page where you enter a name and it has a remove me button and the list updates when someone joins or leaves? Brandon, this is a beautiful idea and this is exactly what I'm gonna do because this will be easy enough to demonstrate all of the different ways of doing it. Thank you, Brandon. Can we get some 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 hearts in the chat for Brandon? Because this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna go to a web page. You're gonna put your name in. It's gonna pop up on the page. You're gonna see everybody else that's on that web page, um, and then if they leave, there that goes away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's up, uh, Hikanch? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> All right. This is what we're gonna do. Um, thank you, chat. <laughs> My simple mind is something good. Now, this is, this is a really good idea. So, uh, example, um, which comes from Brandon. Um, basically, you're going to go to a web page, and we're going to show everybody's name that's on that, that, that web page. Cool. Yeah, I'm using a VPN. That's that's why the captcha's broken, for sure. What's up, Milky Dev? Welcome, welcome. Hearts. Hearts in the chat. Okay. Um, now, I could use Socket.io. I could. And I kind of want to, but something is telling me that I should probably just use like raw web sockets. Um, and there, I believe there's like a WS library in on Node. 
uh, simple to use, blazing fast, and thoroughly tested WebSocket so client and server for Node. So, uh, the, so the raw, raw source. <laughs> so that would allow me to create a server. Um, and then, yeah. Oh, nice, Julian. That's good to hear. Uh, what what channel were you watching in? Watching it on? Um, I, I don't I don't mind if you share a link. Weekly downloads, 27 million. No, this is like the de facto Node.js WebSocket library. Like, technically, you could implement it yourself. So uh, Node.js has an HTTP module. It has a, a net module where you can just open up raw UDP TCP sockets. Um, but that would be a whole lot of work. I don't want to do that. So basically, they've implemented the WebSocket standard inside of Node.js. Um, if we look at WebSockets on um, here, on MDN, um, we should be able to read more about it. Hopefully, <laughs> the website's still here. Um, do we see some examples? Events. Okay, so uh, create a WebSocket that has a connection to a server. Add a listener for an event. Yeah, yeah. Javid X9. Very cool. <laughs> Emoji use leaderboard. That could be cool. I, we got it. It's got to be simple enough that I can just like write the code for it. Cool. So this allows us to create a server. Uh, we can listen for specific event types. We're just gonna do this. All right. Um, yeah. Here's the thing. Like developer relations are are what made Mozilla. I feel like it's what made them so prevalent and popular because developers trusted them, right? Right? I don't know. Tic-tac-toe, but everyone only controls one square. How would that work, though? Would it be a giant, a giant grid? Like, each person that joins adds a new row and column? Yeah, we're just going to do the list. We're going to stick with that. Uh, my weekend was good. Weekend was good. Thank you for asking, Moki Dev. Um, okay. Let's get this going. Let's just, uh, let's just create an app. Excuse me. Um... I'm going to write all of the code in, in the root here. Um, so I'm going to npm init it. So if you're if you're new to the stream and you're just joining, I write JavaScript. We're writing this in Node.js. Um, and so I've created a package.json so that I can install some dependencies. So I've got my my package.json. We're going to install this that WS dependency, that thing. Um, Yeah, and like technically, we probably want like an express app or something like that. So that we could serve a static folder. Yeah, because this shows it uh, sharing a, an HTTP server. Hmm. I think I'm going to install express too. This will be fun. First of all, I've never used the WS library. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I'm familiar, gals. But um, if I do, if I type that, then I don't get to scroll up like this to see my history. So that's why I use the clear command. Um, okay, so I've never used the WS library. This could go horribly wrong, but it could be fun. It could be fun. Uh, I'm gonna make a source directory. That's where all my codes are gonna go. Um, and uh, because I am who I am, we're gonna install ESLint, which is gonna lint my code for me. It's gonna tell me if I do anything weird. I hate seeing history after clear. <laughs> Um, cool. And then I'm going to, uh, run ESLint, um, which will ask me questions. We're going to just use the Airbnb style guide. We're not having any, uh, front end code. We're not using TypeScript. We're actually running inside of Node.js. And then we're just going to use the Airbnb style guide. Let's go. I download the module for every project. Yep. 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 Guten Morgen, Bluefinks. Welcome, welcome. Uh, you're right, Doc, but I don't have the time. We're gonna put, I'm gonna put it on Heroku, so like I'm I'm not gonna put this on AWS. So if you want to DDoS it, it costs me nothing. So <laughs> um, cool. Um, don't don't DDoS it. That's that's mean, right? Just just don't. I'm literally just I'm trying I'm trying to teach these kids I'm trying to demonstrate concepts and you're gonna come here and try and DDoS it why would you do that you don't want people to learn I guess some people don't want people to learn that's okay it's not okay but I mean people can do what they want to do 
Not going to stop them. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, <laughs> so what I just did there was I installed all my dependencies. We have um, our, our uh, Express and WebSocket dependency, and then uh, ESLint, which is going to lint our code. Um, so Express is going to let us create an HTTP uh, API. And then WS is going to allow us to have a backend WebSocket server. So let's let's just get this set up. Um, we're going to bring in Express DDoS localhost. <laughs> Teach us. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Okay. Um, no, no, this is not how that works. We create Express, <laughs> and then we create an app. Uh, which is express invoke like this. This is our app. Um, I'm just going to do a basic uh, get route right now. Um, we'll have our request. We'll have our response. We'll have next. I, I could have used a generator. Oh, man. The reason I say this is because now I have to set up error handling. There's a lot I need to do. Um, that, that's fine, though. That's fine. Um, if you want a good site to DDoS, yeah, that's uh, Julian has it. Just use that IP address. Uh, okay, so we need a port. Um, this is going to be process.env.port. Uh, specifically, because I'm deploying to Heroku, it sets the port environment variable. But I'll say locally, we're going to use port 4242. Um, we're just going to listen on that. And then uh, for the basic get request, we're just going to res.json. Um, Hello, like this. OK, we should have a basic Express API. Um, let's start it up. And there's some other dependencies I need. Coding is hard. You need so many things. I'm going to add, um, well, no, I need .env in general. And then I guess I also want nodemon as a dev dependency, because that's going to automatically restart my stuff. Not nodemon. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's pretend that didn't happen. <coughs> Node mon, no daemon. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is a, a tool that will um, automatically refresh or automatically restart the server if it uh, if the files change. Cool. So I have all these dependencies, um, and I'm gonna add some some start scripts. So I need a um, a dev script <laughs> that's just gonna say uh, node mon, node mon, uh, source index.js. So uh, if things change, it's automatically going to restart. And then I can do npm run dev. It's listening. And if I go to localhost 4242, we get a response. First try. First try. What's up, Leachy? Welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, I didn't plan on using uh, ExpressWS. I, I probably could. But I kind of wanted to just use this library directly. And then I realized I probably also need just an HTTP server in general. Brandon with the resub who says, happy two months. Thank you again for all the content. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, um, what's happening? Yeah, I'll search for it. <laughs> Let's see if it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make things easier. It, it, it probably is. And thank you very much, uh, Dyslexic Llama. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Uh, WebSocket endpoints for Express applications. And Slick Will. Thank you very much, very much for the 100, 100 bits. Um, so add it. Put it on our Express app. Yeah, this would make it a lot easier. Well. We're going to use it. <laughs> so instead of using WS directly. So uh, the, th the thing about using WS is we would have had to have um, basically passed the server in to Express here instead of doing it directly. We're just going to use this. It's going to make it easier. Dwight, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Um, and uh, this is a well-known library. This has 48,000 weekly downloads. Um, we're going to use it. OK. I'm going to uninstall WS. It probably has WS as a dependency itself last published two years ago i mean let's see what it does index yeah so it has the ws dependency i mean i mean so, okay <laughs> yeah i do not like the fact that it was it was published a very long time ago 
Um, I mean, I'm I'm in the JavaScript world, and I have not gotten the sense that Koa is more popular than Express. Is it? Is it? I don't want to use Socket.io because I want to demonstrate um, how we would do the different things with like long pulling. Yeah, let's just search for WebSockets. Um, HTTP proxy middleware. Express WebSocket 2, published a month ago. Um, it has five, five weekly downloads. <laughs> Stop Stop telling me to use other things. Um, I appreciate you, Lechi. I'm just going to use WS, mainly because we'll we'll see how we could set this up directly with Express. Um, <laughs> five weekly downloads. Honestly, though, honestly, though, um, no. No, yes, no. I could just use Express WS. Okay. <laughs> oh, WebSockets. <laughs> use WebSockets. All right, we're going to use WebSockets. <laughs> so I just uninstalled it. I'm going to reinstall it. Um, this is an NPM install stream. I could be the sixth download this week. <laughs> um, cool. So we have WS. And if we look back at, at their docs, they show us how to use it uh, with an external HTTP server. Um, actually, do they even show us like Express? Really, we just need um, external HTTP server like this. So um, we're going to bring in HTTP. We're going to bring in WebSocket. So um, there is an HTTPS library, but I'm going to use the HTTP library um, because wherever we deploy, there'll be a reverse proxy that adds SSL. So I, I don't have to worry about SSL in here. Um, so we need a server. HTTP.create server. Um, and I think I can pass the server in here. I'll have to, I'll have to figure out how we, how we get the, how we get Express to use that specific server. I think it's something like that. We'll have to look at the Express docs. Uh, and then instead of saying app.listen, we just say server.listen. Um, cool. Let's just see if this works. Why is this complaining? A regular white space. What? On the other way around, you pass the Express app into the server. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> um, and thank you, uh, Aaron. So create the Express app, pass the app into the server, and then now you see we're, we're doing server.listen. But what this allows us to do is to use this HTTP server uh, with the WS library. So let's just make sure this works. Uh, npm run dev. Um, and then if we go back to localhost 4242, we should see the exact same response. Um, we do. Great, great. <laughs> yeah, uh, Melky, uh, thank you for the rave, the raving review. It says TJ's video on WebSockets basically taught me about WebSockets. So if everyone is lost, you can watch some of his earlier or older videos. Well, thank you very much. Um, it works. So now we need to create some WebSockets, uh, web, WebSocket listeners. So um, we're going to create a WebSocket server, just like this. Let's do it. Right here. Um, and WebSocket gets required in from WS. Yeah, yeah. So here we go. Uh, so we passed app into the server because this HTTP server is now going to be shared between our Express API and our WebSocket server. So that way, uh, clients can connect to the same server on the same port. And we don't have, we're not going to have separate servers for our API versus our WebSockets. Uh, but you can see down here at the bottom, instead of saying app.listen, I'm saying server.listen. And because I've passed the app into the server, it, it knows what to do. <laughs> There's a better way to explain that, but just it knows what to do. Um, cool. So we're going to bring in WebSocket from that. We're going to create a server where we just pass in that server that we created up here. Um, when we get a connection, um, we're going to do this business. Let's turn it into arrow functions because... That's just the kind of people that we are. So uh, when we get a connection, WS represents the client, that specific client that got connected. Um, and then when we receive some specific event name, um, I'm just going to do ping. Um, we'll say we received this message. That's it. So 
This is literally all it takes to set up a server that listens for WebSocket events with the name ping, and then can actually use that data that is uh, emitted by the client. Cool. Um, this is our server. <laughs> Let's get this working, and then we'll, we'll make it a little bit more complex. Um, I'm going to create a public folder. So um, I, I, in this particular scenario, I am going to be serving the client from the exact same server. Technically, this uh, client could be totally separate. It could be it could live on a separate static website, but we're gonna just, just going to put it here. So um, we'll create our basic HTML that says, hello, real time. Um, same thing here, hello, real time. And then we're going to tell Express to serve up that public folder. So uh, right about here, I'm going to say app.use express.static. Um, and we'll bring in the path library. This is useful for creating uh, relative paths and such. Uh, so I'll do uh, path.join. We want to go up one directory, because we're in the source directory. We want to go into the public directory. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so uh, now that I've done this, Express is going to serve up that static file on the root path. Um, and now that would actually conflict with this. It would, it would basically default to this, because this was registered first in the middleware stack. So let's change this to slash hello. So if we go to slash hello, we should get a JSON response. If we go to the home page, we should see the index.html. Let's see what happens. Um, our server should have auto restarted. Great, because of Nodemon. That's awesome. Um, and. If we go here now, we say <laughs> cannot get slash. Um, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and actually, uh, Albert is saying dir name. So this is relative to the file. However, we're starting it from the directory above it. So it actually just needs to be dot slash. Actually, so if we did this, if we just do dot slash public, that's going to work. But it's better to use the dir name, and I'll show you why in a second. So there we go. Hello, real time. Um, so let's do this. Make it relative to where this file is, is executing from. So um, I'm in this specific directory. I'm in src. And so dir name is a special variable in Node.js that tells us where we are exactly. You also could do like process.current working directory. And what I'm saying is from there, go up one directory and then go into public. Because typically, this is um, this is actually relative to where your code is right now. OK, regardless. So that works. So uh, we have our root serving our HTML. And if I go to slash hello, we get back the JSON response. So that's great. Um, OK. Can we just put public? You can. But this this is like potentially uh, cross-platform, has cross-platform support. And it, it, it will still work <clears throat> if somebody runs the file from inside of this folder, from instead of the folder above it. But regardless, let's do it. Um, OK, so let's actually just get a WebSocket connection from, uh, from the client. So, And actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to rename this from public. I'm going to rename this to client. Because let it be known, these are, these are still a separate client and a server. One thing is going to be running inside of the web browser. The other thing is running on a server. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rename this to client. Um, and then we'll we'll get the get the connection going. Um, cool. So <clears throat> we're now in the client folder. Um, we need to add some client side JavaScript. So I'm going to add the source. This is going to be um, client.js. Again, I'm being very explicit that this code is running on the client side. And then um, inside of client client.js, uh, let's just log. Hello world. And we should see it. Um, so open up the dev tools, refresh. Hello world. Very cool. So we have client side JavaScripts. Um, because we're here, let's just add some basic styles. We'll do a, a basic reset. So everything has no padding and no margin and has a box sizing of border box. Do I need to do this? Probably not, but I'm going to anyways. Um, now the body has a font family of uh, sans serif. So it'll look nice. It'll look like this. It's pretty cool. OK, quick stretch. <clears throat> I, too, recommend Traversy Media. <laughs> Check him out on YouTube. <laughs>
<sighs> Hello, Flu. How's it going? Oh, we've gotten quite a few follows. Um, I'm going to acknowledge all of these. Uh, Omichi, thank you for the follow. Uh, TS Wh TSX Witch, thanks for being here. What's up, Dark King? Thank you for the follow. Uh, Squibbles, appreciate you. Contract, thank you for being here. Uh, Deep Deep Tree, thank you. Ah, uh, welcome. Hello, gals. And Benit, and Rizu, and Grand Dev, and Dr. Weird Love, and Lucas, and Dude, and Mr. Bandit, and Volkoff, welcome, welcome. Hello, Centralera. <laughs> Hello, Ta Tausa. Badler. Hello, you. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but welcome. Uh, and uh, CL Adubia. Welcome, welcome. Um, okay. So, if you're just joining us, here's what we're doing. We were asked a question uh, by Mitzik, who says, what is the best way to show webhook data from the backend in a React component, component uh, is the only way WebSockets. And so what they were asking is basically, how do you show real-time data on a web page? Um, so, like, you have data in a database, and potentially that change or there's some other change on the server side, and you want to reflect that across all of your clients. Uh, and so we're talking about that right now. And basically what we're doing is we're implementing a very simple uh, Node.js server that implements or that has WebSockets. And that's what we're writing right now. But there are a lot of other ways to do it. Right now, we're going to demonstrate, um, or we are demonstrating WebSockets. I'm going to attempt to demonstrate long polling. Um, it's been a very long time since I wrote that from scratch. So we'll see if I can do that. And then we'll talk about some of these other things as well. Um, and at the end of the day, they all have the same result. You could do something on the server side. The client can be alerted that that thing has happened, and it can automatically reflect that in the UI. Um, and so what we're doing right now is we set up a client. Now we need to do the WebSocket thing. So <clears throat> this is basically basically what we got to do um, is um, try to connect to the back end. And actually, I think what I want to do is, OK, so we're, right now we're in client side code. I really just want to add window.location.hostname. Or window.location.host, I think. Like, if we look really quick in the client side, if I do window.location.host, hey, look at that. Localhost 4242. Beautiful. So that, that's what I want. But I want to put web, WS or WebSocket in front of it. Um, and actually, can we do window.location. Is there a protocol? Let's look at the location object. Protocol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'm going to need this later when I deploy. So I'm going to go ahead and write it where, um, let's do this socket URL is equal to if window.location.protocol uh, is equal to HTTPS um, colon, then um, guess what Traversy Media uploaded? I have no idea. What did he upload? <laughs> Um, let's call this uh, socket protocol. So if it's HTTPS, then we're going to do WSS. Otherwise, we're going to do WS. Um, and right here is where we have the socket protocol. Oh, really? Was it a WebSocket video just now? Like just now? Just now? I'm curious. <laughs> a real-time chat app? Um, let's see. Traversy Media. The simulation is re like right now. <laughs> right now, right now? Um, let's see. Are you sure about that? Oh, well. Who's it from? So Traversy Media has been having guests on his show. I'm actually going to be a guest on his show. Um, well, an, not his show. I'm going to upload a video. <laughs> and he's going to put it on his YouTube channel. Um, who is this? Jack Harrington. I actually haven't seen him before. That's pretty cool. Well, look at that. A real-time chat app. That's kind of, I mean, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, okay, so I have the protocol. If it's HTTPS, we want to be WSS. If it's not HTTP, if it's HTTP, we want to be WS. And then we're going to connect to that specific protocol on the specific host that we're on, mainly because this client-side code is running from the same origin as our backend. Um, and so um, whenever... We get connected. We're just going to say, um, let's just log. Connected to server, like that. Uh, and then on our back end, uh, whenever we get a socket connection, here we'll say um, client 
connected. So this is the back end. When someone connects, we're gonna know on the back end code. And then here, when someone when we connect to the server, we're gonna log it in the console. Uh, and then we're gonna listen for um, actually we're not emitting any event any events. We could do something like websocket dot uh, send pong <laughs> like this. <laughs> so um, the client is gonna listen for pong. And then we get the message from the server. Um, but whenever the, the client connects to the server, we're going to do, uh, can we do socket.send? Yeah, socket.send ping. Hello, server. Cool. All right, I already said we were gonna draw a diagram. We need to, we need to draw a diagram. But if I've done everything correctly, let's see what happens. It says connected to server. Let's look at our backend logs. It says client connected. Um, let's see. Uh, is it socket.emit? Or is socket.send? Let's look at uh, the example here. So it just says... Oh, okay. So these are these are specific type of mess. I see. We're potentially going to have to... We're going to have to, like, parse the, the name of the event and stuff like that. Um, okay. Yes. So... When the server receives a message, um, that message could technically have a name or a type, regardless. But we have to we have to actually listen for message. So when the server receives a message, we're going to respond with pong, um, and the message that we're, so we're going to say send um, ping message dot event name. Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, well, we, we'd have to do that manually because you can see, well, let, let's see what happens because we're going to log the entire message. Okay, so we have uh, the client. When it opens, we're going to send ping. This actually will ha happen on the message listener. And then this is just going to say pong. And then the client says whenever we receive, receive pong, we're going to say message from server. Okay, so uh, refresh the page. Connected to server. Received ping. Um, very good. That's good. So we got a ping from the client. We want to send a message back. Um, so we actually do want to see send. I guess do we, can we just listen for message? Is that what we're gonna have to do? Let's see. Yeah, we can't listen for pong. <laughs> gonna, we have to listen for just message. Uh, so this is what something like socket IO provides. And which, and which is what I'm used to, because I've never used the raw sockets themselves, is um, you have, like, named events. So you can listen for one specific, like, a specific event, like ping or pong or something like that, and do something in response. In this case, we only have one message listener, and then we would have to write all of our code to determine what the different types of messages are. Yeah, okay, so yeah, this is going to work. Watch. So uh, connected to server, message from server, pong, and we can see that the server received ping. Great, great. Um, it's working. How can we tell it's working? Let's let's spin up multiple clients. So um, I'm just gonna have an array of uh, clients. It's an array like this. Um, F <laughs> um, No, no. So we're gonna have a, an in an in in memory array of all the connected clients, um, and so. Whenever we get a WebSocket connection, that's one unique connection um, to the server. So we're just going to say clients.push. We're going to push in an object that has that WebSocket object on it. Um, and we're going to do some other things. So this is also where we'll keep track of things like people's names and, such, and things like that. Um, and let's just actually do this. So when someone connects, we're going to say their name is a Nani Mouse. So by default, the name is anonymous. Um, we could technically, can we access clients? I want to keep my own. I want to keep my own because I'm going to have more metadata about them. It probably makes sense, but this is my first time using the, the WebSocket library. Um, there should be a unique ID under the hood, right, for um, the WebSocket itself. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, so we have an array. It has uh, these items here. I'm actually just going to create an endpoint called like uh, clients. And then um, 
we're going to just respond with uh, all of the names of the clients. Not, we're not going to respond with their full connection, but we're just going to do clients.map, uh, get the client, and we just want to respond with their name. So this is going to send back an array of all the connected clients. Cool. Cool. So uh, now we have this. And if I go to uh, localhost 4242 slash clients, we should see an array of length one because there is one connected client. Name is not defined. Oh, client.name. We'll get this. Cool. So because the server restarted, there are no connected clients. If I go here and I refreshed, now in, in this, this web page now has a persistent connection to the back end. And if we request the clients, we see one. Great. Now, what if I open a new tab? Am I going to see two? Why, yes. Why, yes, we do. If I open another tab, am I going to see three? Why, yes. So there are actually three connected clients to this backend, and we have a list of all those clients. Now, they're all in the same web browser, right? Uh, but they are technically, they all technically have a persistent connection to the backend. Um, we need to handle whenever the client disconnects, we want to remove them from that array. Um, so. Let's do that. How can we do that? Disconnect uh, WebSocket on close. So we'll get that. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so when the WebSocket is closed, we're going to remove it from the array. So right here, I'm just going to say uh, clients equals clients dot filter um, where client dot WebSocket does not equal that specific WebSocket. Uh, one thing I'll mention for anybody that, like, I guess wants to nitpick, this only works with a single server. Like, this this would not scale, especially because I'm using an, an array in memory, and we're keeping track of this WS object. If I wanted to scale this horizontally, you couldn't do this. You'd have to think, you'd, there's a lot of other things you'd have to think about. Um, but that should be fine. I'm going to make this let so that I can reassign it. Hey, stop redeeming Hydrate. Stop it. Stop it. It's not cool. Not cool. <laughs> um, so now when someone disconnects, we're actually going to remove them from that array. Now what this will do is, uh, OK, so now there's one connected client, right? Refresh this. Now there's two connected clients. Refresh this. Now there's three, three connected clients. Now, if I close one of the tabs, like if I close this tab, there should only be two connected clients, right? And then if I close this tab, there are only one connected client. If I close that tab, there are no connected clients. Um, so when the tab is open, there was a persistent connection to the server, which is great. Um, OK. Um, please don't try and drown the streamer. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, that's awesome. That's great. Now what do we do? Now what? Um, I think like it would be nice to have like a specific a specific uh, message handler. Um, so yeah, I'm no I'm no longer gonna do the ping and the pong thing. Well, thank you, Johnny Drama. I like my shirt too. <laughs> that sip was eight hydrates exactly. <laughs> I'm just I'm gonna give everybody just I'm gonna give everybody their money back or their points back after. Yep, yeah, all this code is gonna go on GitHub for sure. So this will work without HTTPS uh, for now because I'm on localhost. When I deploy, it's going to have HTTPS. Um, OK, what am I doing? I want to do this. So I'm going to say, like, if actually, do I have to, like, stringify and parse the message? I bet I do, don't I? Let's see. So like on the client, instead of sending ping, I'm going to send an object where the uh, type is ping. Or uh, let's call it the name is ping. And the data is an object where the message is high. Something like this. So um, I'm, I want to send this object from the client side. And I want to see what does it look like on the server side. And so right now, I'm just logging the entire message. My guess is that we're going to have to like uh, parse it, um, unless it already is an object. But let's see. OK, so our server restarted. Well, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Um, and then we're going to go to the client. We're going to connect. And let's see uh, what got logged. Oh, it's object object. Great, which means, this is what it means. It means the client side uh, stringified this before it sent it. So basically, we need to, uh, uh, and, and not, it didn't stringify it. It called to string, which gives us back object object. Object object. 
<laughs> Wait, what about the primogen? Are they here? Oh, well, welcome. Thanks for being here, primogen. <laughs> Object, object. I've gone full full JavaScript for sure. Um, so here's what we got to do. Instead of sending the object, so like by default, object we, we call two string on the object, and uh, <laughs> there is a lot of coding today. I mentioned it. I mentioned like we're basically just going to answer that one question. But okay, this is the default is object, object. We want the actual contents. So I'm going to do JSON dot stringify, um, like so. Uh, so now, now when we see that thing logged here, instead of seeing object object, we should see the full string thing. <laughs> uh, okay, so we reconnect. Look at that, great. But now on the server side, uh, the the type is actually a string, so we need to turn it back into an object. Um, full string, yeah, it's the full string thing. <laughs> so and actually, I'm gonna put this in a try catch because it could be possible that. Someone's and it, and it is going to be possible. Someone like when if when I deploy this and people try to connect to it, people are going to send random data to it. So I'm going to put it in a try catch. I'm going to call this um, message obj message object uh, is going to be um, JSON dot parse the message. Great. And then we'll say uh, if message dot name. We want name. Let's do type. I like type. Type is better. So if the type is equal to ping, if message dot type is equal to ping, needs try else. I mean that's kind of what this is. When <laughs> if it catches the error, we do something. <laughs> um, so if the message type is ping, then we're going to uh, send uh, pong like that. And actually, uh, then we we have to serialize and deserialize it again. Like technically, uh, what I what I kind of want to do is I want to send an object where the type is pong, um, and then the data is just like well, there there is no data like that. Um, however, hey Visual Studio, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome raiders, welcome to the show. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Um, oh wow! So I was not looking at the viewers today. I told myself I wasn't going to, but there were already quite a, quite a lot of people before you all got here, but thanks for being here. Uh, what we are currently doing is um, a question was asked by uh, Mitzik in the chat, who says, Hey, C Sharp Fritz, welcome, welcome, our fearless leader. Check out C Sharp Fritz. He's a member, well, he's the leader of our Life Coders team. <laughs> um, uh, why Kalem says, I don't need to JSON parse and stringify it manually. Cool, cool. So we'll, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll check that on the front end really quick. But for all the Raiders, Thank you for being here. You have arrived at the coding garden. Um, this is a Q&A stream where usually we answer questions. I'm trying my best to actually write code today, which means we're actually really only answering one question. <laughs> uh, but the question came from Mitzik, which was, what is the best way to show webhook data from the back end in a React component uh, is the only way WebSockets. Um, and the, the question they were really asking is, how do we show real-time data on a web page? So let's say, for instance, data in your database changes or something happens on the server and you want to let any person that's on a web page know that that has happened, um, this is where you would need something like this. Um, and what we're talking about right now are WebSockets. So this is one way of solving this problem, because uh, WebSockets are a persistent, a persistent connection from the client to the server. It's a, a full duplex bi-directional communication, bi-directional connection where Clients can send messages to servers, and servers can send messages to connected clients. And what we're doing right now is we're actually just we're using the the core web, well not the core like the raw WebSocket library in Node, and we're using raw WebSockets in the browser. And I've never actually done this before. So the way that I typically implement this is use a library like Socket.io, mainly because it handles a lot of these things for me. Like right now, what we just started doing was on the client side, I wanted to be able to send an object, but that's not supported by default. Basically, I have to stringify it. And then on the server side, I have to uh, parse it. We haven't actually tested this yet. I'm about to test it. Um, so there's that. And so that's what we're doing right now is we're, we're implementing WebSockets, but I'm using the stuff that's just built into the browser. And then we're using the WS library to get it all going. Um, so that's where we are right now. And at this point, what we just did was we stringified what we sent to the server. We saw that that was working here. Now we parsed it right here. 
and we're gonna see if it worked. So, uh, and actually I'm just gonna log the message object and we're checking to see if the type is ping, then we're gonna send type pong. And the client um, is looking at event.data. And so what someone mentioned in the chat is uh, we don't, we shouldn't have to stringify and parse this. Like event data is going to be the full thing. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you're right. You're totally right, Hokey. And then uh, if there was an error, um, we're gonna pass in the error. And uh, so what I'm what I'm doing right now is it's very possible that somebody sends some some WebSocket data to my server that cannot be parsed with JSON, and then we're gonna catch that error. Um, so I do plan on deploying this to the web so that people can test it out. And typically when I do that, people like to mess with me. And so you always gotta add your try catch to prevent that, um, or at least handle that, not prevent it. People are gonna people are gonna be people. Um, okay, so um, we're connected to the server. We look at the back end. Oh no, uh, invalid argument type. The first argument must be of type string. Okay, so whenever we tried to respond with ping, it actually does need to be a string. Uh, so we need to fix that. But you can see that now the server is actually parsing parsing uh, this data. Oh, what's up? <laughs> and Jarrell, great job. Oh yeah, I totally forgot to mention, those of you, if you did stick around from the raid, there's some cool things happening on my screen. Uh, if you all wanna join me in doing this really quick, it's pretty fun. In the chat, if you type drop me, that will drop your avatar. So there I am. And then if I land, oh, that's, I think maybe? No, 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 I won't, no, okay. So if you land in the coding garden like this, first try, first try. Uh, you'll get a seedling. That's gonna be a tiny, tiny seedling. The closer you are to the middle, the bigger your seedling will be. Yeah. Let's see, Kappa, Kappa. No, right on the edge. There are very, very few good drops. <laughs> Who is this? Uh, Sir Goldman, great drop. I'm waiting for somebody to land like very close to the center. It's not happening. Well, there's a, it's, it's, maybe, no. No, <laughs> it's not happening. Good job, Const Dave. Um, oh, the, oh, right, right, one after another. Uh, I can't even read. So it's uh, Janicky and then someone else. Great, great drops, great drops. So yeah, you can do that. That's fun. Um, okay. So wh why this is complaining is whenever we attempted to send right here, this needs to be a string, and we're trying to send an object. So I'm just going to do uh, JSON dot stringify, like so. And so that way we actually are sending a string, and which means that I'm gonna need to parse that string on the client side um, right here. I'm gonna turn these into arrow functions just because that's the kind of JavaScript developer that I am. And uh, we should be able to do something like this. So we're gonna do another, we're gonna do a try catch on the client side. We're currently on the client. Um, we're gonna say uh, message is json.parse event.data. And then we're gonna just log the message. Uh, if we couldn't parse it, we're going to uh, log an error. Um, cool. Is this going to work? Place your bets now. Okay, so <laughs> I'll explain. I'll explain. Try to explain what's happening. And I keep saying I wanted to draw a diagram, but I didn't draw a diagram yet. Okay, this is the front end web page. When I refresh, so the page has refreshed, we connected to our back end server. So we connected to our server that's running here. It says client connected. And then once we connected, we sent a little object that said type ping. So that got sent to the server. The server then received that message here. And because the type was ping, it responded with an object where the type is pong. That got sent back to the client. The client was listening for messages. It parsed that incoming message. And then we, we logged it out. Um, so you can see here, object type ping. Great, great. Yeah, we removed the, the drop scoreboard a while back. We have, I'm gonna draw a diagram right now. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, and then we have this other thing where we can see all of the connected clients. Let's see, fresh that. Um, yeah, so we can see there's an anonymous connection and um, each tab we open is actually a new connection to the server. So you can see that the server got all of these connected clients. And then if we do this, we can see that there are several uh, anonymous clients that are connected right now. Cool. Um, let's draw a picture. I'm gonna draw a picture, I'm gonna do my best. Share it with Ingrok. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> There's no way, no way I would do that. Uh, Ingrok actually will uh, stop working 
if you get too many connected clients. Okay. Here we go. We need to help you stress test. No. <laughs> I will draw a picture. Uh. <clears throat> Actually, I need to pull this up. Code, code drawing <laughs> with CJ. No, it's gonna be an ugly picture. I'm not. I'm not a very good drawer or a very good writer. Cool. Um, there's that. Later, please. Um, good enough. Hand stream. <laughs> you can see, oh, you're going to see it in a second. Uh, <laughs> happy little JSON objects. Uh, so we can do this. Hi. And then we need a vertical flip too. Oh, no. And then we don't need to flip that direction. Good enough. Draw shadow puppets. <laughs> Um, oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So if you tuned in a while back, we did a music stream. Okay. I think we're going to use black for this. So here's what's happening. We have the client. How's that look? Okay. We're, we're going to get there. <laughs> client. And we have the server um, here and here. Beautiful, beautiful. So typically, typically uh, the way HTTP works is it works with requests and responses. So the client, for instance, would make a request to the server and it would say like, I want to get slash hello. So it's, it's requesting one specific thing from the server. The server will, will do its business, uh, whatever that may be. Uh, the server might need to look in a database. It may, might need to call another API. Um, it, it might do, need to do a lot of things. Uh, but, but basically, it's going to think about it, and then that server is going to respond. Typically, there is a status code associated with response. So like 200 means A-OK, -okay, everything's good. Uh, typically, it responds with the, the, uh, the protocol version, like HTTP 1.1. I know we should be using 2.0, but whatever. So it responds, and then the client can do something with that response. So this is this is your typical uh, HTTP request response cycle. The client makes a request, the server processes that request, um, and then responds with that. It looks like a zoo. Stop it! Stop! Stop! <laughs> stop! Stop! Um, stop criticizing my drawing. Uh, it's fine. So it looks like a zoo. It's a 200. Let it be known that it is a 200. These are zeros, like that. Um, True. <laughs> cool. So um, what we are now talking about is a persistent connection. And honestly, I don't even know how to draw this with the re request response diagram because technically with WebSockets, it is a persistent connection. Like it is not a, like this, this is a, here's the thing, the client. So when we say client, we mean the, the web browser or a mobile phone or any, anything that's going to be making the HTTP request. And when it makes the request and it gets the response, it's done. <laughs> now it's Swedish. It's done. There's there's no more connection between the client and the server. The client basically says, I want the thing, please. The server says, here is your thing. Done. With WebSockets, uh, it, is no, it is no longer like call and response. It, it is now a persistent like connection. So it's kind of like you have this, you have this tube, this bi-directional tube that gets opened up. Um, and this tube stays open. And so like you could think about... Um, the time moves moves forward in this direction. So like this is earlier, this is later. But with, with web sockets, we know let's I think this is this is a good way to do it. We gotta we gotta um, now it looks like a ladder. <laughs> the tube. I wanna do this. This is like literally a connection a connecting tube from the client to the server. So now 
now that you have uh it's a wormhole yes why are you all being so mean today <laughs> Uh, it's okay. It's all in good fun. So now with WebSockets, uh, you have a persistent connection from the client to the server. So instead of send the request, get back the response, you connect and now the client can send anything it wants. So like the client could do something like send the ping and the server can respond with Pong, but the connection doesn't close. It stays open. So, um, the client could send more messages to the back end or the server could send more messages to the client um, and it doesn't have to reopen a connection it is literally literally a persistent bi-directional connection to the to the server is this what i wanted to draw i don't know let me let me, let me think about um the actual like what's happening here and what i wanted to draw yeah i mean that's kind of it so like uh the server uh is actually thank oh thank you Thank you. Thank you, Shrek. <laughs> Every response I get back from ping is now a pong. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, and so if we're, if we're thinking about the code that we've written, server, this is our Node.js server. Um, whenever we set up that WebSocket code, it's basically setting it up to have this persistent connection. And then the client, whenever it connects, it can now communicate over that tube. I don't know. I think the, the potentially we'll, 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 we'll revisit the drawing to talk about things like long polling or server sent events, which are slightly different. Um, does the client connect automatically when instantiating the WebSocket class? Uh, it doesn't. So you can see in our, our client side code what we had to do. Well, actually, yeah, it, it does. So, uh, but first we had to figure out what is the server that we're trying to connect to. So we have the socket protocol, which is either WSS for WebSocket Secure or WS for um, plain text sockets. Um, and then we pass in the host. So by creating the instance of the WebSocket here that actually behind the scenes connects. And then on the cli client side, uh, we can listen for when we actually are connected and do something. And then we can listen for specific messages, uh, which is fun. Yeah, um, and so I guess that, that, that could be something that we uh, that I could draw out really quick. Um, well, that's not very nice, these colors leaking. It's fine, it's fine. Yeah, and so Socket.io handles a lot of this. So I'll show, I'll show you the parts that Socket.io handles for you in a second. But basically, you don't have to manually JSON parse and JSON stringify the data. You don't have to uh, have like a switch statement or an if statement checking to see like what is the event type and what are we doing in response to that event. Socket.io just handles it all. Oh, yeah, this is abstract art, isn't it? <laughs> um, okay, but let's say we're not going to do a request response diagram, but let's say we have our, this is our server. Right, and then uh, we have our C for client. And there's lots of them, right? All the people that come to a website and they want real-time information, they're all, they're all here. With WebSockets, that's literally what happens. There's literally a tube. Right? So with WebSockets, there's literally a tube connecting each client to the server. And so um, so you can see how uh, we may run into issues if our server is not big enough. It needs a big cloud. All right, okay, so technically, this is the cloud. Uh, I, wanted, I, could, I should have drawn it with blue. But this is the cloud. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so the new messages are at the top. Uh, WebSockets are water-cooled. Everyone's a troll today. I don't know. That's funny, though. I have uh, six colors. Six colors. But um, so it, it, like basically, this server needs uh, some decent resources, right? If it's going to have a persistent connection to every single connected client, it needs to have a good bit of uh, RAM and, a, and a, uh, a good uh, CPU and all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> hey, do I need a load balancer? And eventually, you potentially would. Yeah. Um, do I think HTTP 2.0 makes WebSockets obsolete? Is uh, servers are server sent events a, a HTTP 2.0 thing? Um, whatever it is, we need some sort of persistent connection. But yes, but think about what this means, right? So like, if you have each one of if, if all these clients are like playing a game locally and they need to know like what is the the latest high score or what's the latest state of the game. Like a client can send, oh, this is my update. I just moved the mouse here. I just moved the piece here. This client could send that. This client could send that. The server keeps track of all of that. And then it can emit the current game state to all of the connected clients so that they know to update their screen and, and show the latest information. Um, 
So, um, yes, this is what happens with multiple clients. Okay, good enough. Great. Great work, everyone. <laughs> well, welcome. Hey, thank you for, for creating an account um, here on Twitch. Welcome to Twitch. Uh, I've seen some clean code stuff. Yeah, I, we are just chatting. This is still just a just chatting stream. All right. I have to go in like 15 minutes. What can we do in 15 minutes? I need to deploy this. So here, here's what I want. So right now, right now, when a client connects, their name is just anonymous. Their name is anonymous. And so what I want to do is I want to emit an event that sets the name of this of this particular collection, uh, connection. So um, what we should do is after we've connected to the server, we want to send the name. Um, so here's what we'll do. How is that different from the client requesting high scores? Uh, yeah, we can go back to the diagram. So basically, um, if, if we're not thinking about WebSockets, if we're just thinking about the request, the response, right? They, you could say make a get request to slash high scores. The server will respond with high scores. But those high scores uh, potentially change very rapidly. And if you wanted to always have the latest data, you would constantly have to say get high scores. List the high scores. Get high scores. List the high scores. Get high scores. List the high scores. Um, because this this is not a persistent connection. It's a request response done. However, with web sockets and with this with this persistent tube, um, the server can emit like anytime somebody has a new high score, it can just say, "Hey clients, here's the latest high score," and they instantly update their screen. The client did not have to initiate that. The client didn't say, "Hey server, what are the latest high scores?" The server just says, "Hey clients, this is the latest high score." So. In this diagram, the server is just like, take the latest data, and the clients don't have to ask for it. Um, okay, so what we need to do is we need to ask the user for their name. Now I know there's a way there's there's a way to do it. <laughs> there's definitely a better way to do it, but we're just gonna do a prompt. Um, let's say prompt, what is your name? Um, and then we're just gonna log out the name and see if this works. So. Um, What is your name? CJ. Okay. And then we get back the name CJ. Great. Uh, and so now what we're going to do is now that we have the user's name, we're going to send that to the server. And I guess I'm not going to do the ping anymore, um, but we are going to do this. So we'll, we'll set the type to be uh, set name. And the message is, um, well, the data includes just the person's name. So we, we have an event type set name and the, it's the name itself. And so uh, we're gonna receive this event on the server and then change that person's name from anonymous to be the name that they actually entered. Um, cool, so now um, we'll say else if message object that type is equal to uh, set name, uh, then we need to set their specific name. And so actually, uh, let's put this here. So we'll say uh, client info equals that. And uh, we're just going to modify this object. So whenever they call set name, uh, we're going to say uh, client info dot name is equal to message object dot data dot name. And then one thing we should do um, is emit the list of clients to any of the connected clients that are already there. Um, cool. So that's going to change it. But it should be good enough. So now. I'm going to refresh. It's going to say, what's your name? I'm going to say CJ. Great. And then now when we request the list of uh, clients, oh, did I mess up? Line 32, triple equals. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's, that's totally wrong. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, the, 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 it's wrong. The, 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 the why is that you shouldn't do that. Okay, so nobody's connected. I refresh this. It asked me for my name. Uh, I'm going to set it to CJ. And then now when I get the client list, instead of seeing anonymous, we should see CJ. Great. And then um, now I can uh, do another connection. And my name is Bob. And we'll connect here. And then we'll do another connection. And uh, your name is Blue Monster. And then we'll do another connection. And your name is... Uh, Utori. And now if we request the list of clients, we should see their actual names. So we have the names of all the people that are uh, that are connected. <laughs> can we build it? Yes, we can. Um, awesome. 
this is great. I think this is literally all I'm gonna do. And now we're gonna take um, we're gonna take this list of clients and actually show it on the um, on the on the client side. So um, when someone changes their name, and really even when someone connects, uh, we are going to omit the list of all the connected clients. Uh, I'm gonna put this in a little function that's like um, get client names like this. Um, and then we're going to uh, call that here. So um, someone sets their name. We basically want to we want to do an emit. We want every connected client to know the list of names. Um, is there an emit on um, server side WebSocket? Emit. Is this what I think it is? <laughs> server, okay, here, server broadcast. A client web, WebSocket broadcasting to all connected clients, including itself. We literally have to iterate over the clients. Well, this is why we use something like Socket.io, because this is very manual. Uh, so it, basically, um, yeah, basically we'll... We'll just do this, uh, but like in in Socket IO, I could just say emit, and it hides the fact that this is happening behind the scenes. It's iterating over all the clients and and uh, sending data. So we're gonna iter iterate over all clients, uh, and then for each client, um, if that client does not equal myself, and the socket is open, then we're going to emit the data that we want. And in this case. Uh, I'm just going to omit uh, the type is uh, name, or let's call it like clients. And the data is uh, get client names like that. So um, a client connects. It sends the message which sets the name on the server. The server side then says, okay, for every other client that's already connected, we're going to emit this, this event called clients with the list of all of the client names so that way we can show them on the page. Um, and actually, I'm, I kind of want to put this in a function so we can reuse it. I don't know. This code, this code is ugly. Let, let it be known. This code is ugly. There are better ways to do it. I'm going to copy and paste this because basically what I want is, um, actually, no, I don't. I basically want this because whenever a, a whenever we get an, in, an initial connection, I also just want to emit to that person that just connected the list of all of the clients, right? All code is beautiful. You're right. <laughs> Oh, that's a good point, Doc. Yeah, Doc, Doc is saying writing this loop lets you know that you are actually sending data to, to a thousand clients at once, uh, which Socket.io hides. Right, 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 right. Um, and in Socket.io, you just say client.emit. It, it, it hides the fact that you have to iterate over every single client and send the message. Okay, regardless, uh, when, a, when a client is connected, we're just going to emit the list of clients to that specific client so that way it knows everyone that is connected. Okay, so... I think we're pretty good. Now we just need to listen for that event. Um, and so now we're on the client side. So we'll say if message.type is equal to uh, Pong, then we do this. Else if message.type is equal to clients, um, then we need to show all the clients on the page. So we'll, so, we'll say like uh, show client list with message.data, which should be an array of clients. And then, um, yeah, we'll just have a function, show client list with an array of clients. Right now, we're just going to log it. Uh, actually, no, let's, let's just put it on the page. Easy enough, right? So um, right below uh, hello real time, we're just going to have a div, not a dov, <laughs> div. And that will have a class of um, clients. Uh, uh, we'll, give it, we'll give it an ID, an ID of clients. And then um, we're just going to put all the names in there. That's all we're going to do. So um, right here, we'll have the clients element. I want a dov <laughs> equals uh, document.query selector. So we're going to find that specific element on the page with the ID clients. And then right here, we'll just say clients element dot uh, text content equals uh, clients uh, with separated by commas. That's it. It's just gonna work. Watch, first try. Okay, so server has restarted. Um, 
And actually, it's, it's kind of won't work. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> we actually, uh, we wrote the code on the server side because to say don't send it if if it's our own connection but i kind of want to do that because i want it to show my name on the page at least um so i'm not going to do that i'm just going to say we're going to send this to every client including the person that just set their name the list of clients okay this is going to work now so client get client names is not a function <laughs> it's not why not oh, oh 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 did anybody catch this this is not a function. That's not first try. Test fail. All right, let's try again. All right, so currently there are uh, no connected clients. Let's close all of these. Uh, we're going to refresh here. My name is CJ. Um, well, we also broke it here. Invalid argument type. Oh, I totally forgot. We're trying to send an object. <laughs> Twitch is updating the view count of a channel with WebSockets. Yeah, they absolutely are. Um... <laughs> So on the server side, I can't just emit this object right here. I need to stringify it, right? Um, this is why this is where we would write like a, a utility method, like send a message, and it automatically stringifies it. Um, so test fail. I caught. Oh, you you should have said something. Okay, uh, I'm I'm open to all all sorts of uh, feedback and suggestions. All right, we got another error. Um, Oh, 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 also up here again, we need some utility functions at this point, but I literally have to go like right now. So <laughs> we're going to uh, just, this should just work. I'll deploy it. And then we can see everyone's name on the page. Cool. So we can see CJ is connected, but I'll show you this. I'll show you this. I'll show you this. So um, watch this. The page is going to be open right here, right? And then um, we're going to open it in another tab and we're gonna say what is your name Bob when I click OK it updates everywhere right and if we and uh, oh you know what we need to do is when someone disconnects we need to update the client list as well let's just do that really quick um, so this which we should have again we should have put that in a function but when so, when um, when someone disconnects we need to also admit that so that it doesn't show who is connected um, and so we'll say this ws.sin. Cool. All right. All right. All right. All right. Here we are. Here we are. So right now, um, there are two people connected, CJ and Bob. But if I close this tab, doesn't disappear. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Um, it should though, right? So when... Oh, we need to emit. We need to emit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to iterate. You're right. You're right. We, when you're right, you're right. We're not emitting to the person that just disconnected. Uh, we need to um, emit to all of the other clients that are still connected. What happens if you choose the same name twice? Then that name will appear twice. Right now, we're not doing any checking for that. We could. We could, like, emit an error and, and require them to, um, to resend their name. So for everyone, send it. Should be fine. It should be fine. Okay, so now, CJ is the only person connected. Um, we're going to go here. My name is Bob. Now there's CJ and Bob. And if I close this tab, now there's just CJ. Wow. Wow. Uh, it is not vulnerable to cross-site scripting. I just know that. Um, but I'm going to put it on the web anyway, So because people are going to try. Um, what, I, what I want to do is I want to limit connections by IP address because people are going to flood this server. People are going to flood this server. <laughs> um, so let me see if I can get the IP address of a WebSocket. Um, IP? So uh, request.socket.remote address. Here we go. Yeah. And I believe, <laughs> I'm trying to start, hey, hey. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not too worried about that, Mihai. Uh, it should be nice, everyone. How many people are watching? That's enough people to where at least one of you is at least one of you is is gonna gonna say bad things, but it's okay. Um, I think I want X forwarded for. I need to double check. So I'm, I am gonna deploy this to Heroku. Um, one yeah, one connection per IP address is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> um, Heroku 
client IP. I think Heroku is technically running behind a proxy. So we do want to do get, uh, X forwarded for. Yeah, yeah, we do. I'm just going to assume that that stack overflow was right. And this is what we want. We want the IP address here. Oh, thank you, Slick Will. Thank you very much. So on the server, when a client connects, um, so let's do this. Uh, we're going to have a um, unique clients. It, this is just going to be a, uh, a set. Um, and then whenever someone connects, we do this business. So uh, wait. Oh, so on connection, we get WebSocket and request. So this is WS and rec, like that. Um, say IP equals, I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna default to date now, just in case for whatever reason this breaks. Uh, so, and then we're going to parse this uh, and set the IP equal to that. Um, and it's either going to be that um, or, oh, actually, no, we'll, we'll default to remote address because actually that's how it's going to be locally right now because I am not running behind a proxy. So remote address. I'm going to log the error. Um, uh, error parsing IP. <laughs> and then um, uh, that's it. We'll, we'll log the error itself. Cool. So that grabs the IP address, and then um, we'll say uh, if uh, unique clients dot has this IP, then we're gonna just immediately close the connection like this. Done. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll say unique clients dot uh, add that specific IP. Great. Um, now. Uh, this this should work locally. I'll only be able to have one connection because it's all my uh, loopback address, my local host address. Let's see if it works. So um, right now, empty array of clients. We'll connect. We'll set our name. Great. So it's CJ. Um, and then if I try to open a new tab, we don't get any events because it closed it. Um, parsing IP cannot read property split. I mean, that makes sense because I'm not running behind a proxy. <laughs> So it, it technically works. It technically works. Um, oh, and then whenever someone disconnects, we need to remove it from uh, unique clients. So right about here, when they close, we'll say unique clients dot. Um, yeah, you definitely like, you can use a VPN. You could use other things. Basically, we're going to limit people from. If someone were to open ten browser tabs, sorry, <laughs> if somebody were to open, open ten um, browser tabs, then. Uh, it would not make 10 connections. And that's really all I'm trying to prevent. That's it. Um, so, that should work. <laughs> I slap the mic all the time. Um, yeah, so there's only only ever one connection. This is great. It's perfectly fine. This, is, this will work, right? Just put this on the internet for everyone to see. Um, do I have the Heroku CLI? Let me see really quick. Oh. Pull in the proxy address NPM middleware and set Heroku IP as this trusted proxy. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, the X forwarded for header can be spoofed. It can. But it's always replaced, isn't it? I'm just gonna. This is fine. <laughs> this is this is fine. Um. This is fine. It's complicated. <laughs> oh, so that's the thing. That's that's how it will break. If only one of you can connect. Um, then, uh, uh, that's, yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess I'll show you what I'm doing. So, wait. Oh, no, because this is a nested git, git directory. 
This is unfortunate. So because I'm deploying with Heroku, um, it needs to be a git, a git uh, repo. Deploy from GitHub? I've never done that before. Is Heroku link a command? <laughs> give, give me one second. Give me one second. So uh, Heroku git remote. I, I have a meeting at 10. I have a meeting at 10. So I said I was going to leave at 930 so that I would leave by 10. Heroku git remote dash a and then the name. All right, I can do this. Couldn't find that app. What? <laughs> Heroku remote ad, is that it though? We'll figure, I'll figure this out. Give me, just give me a second. Um, you know, typically what I do is I just I just go to Heroku.com and copy and paste the thing. Deja Sej with the gifted subs. Thank you very much. And congrats to Johnny Drama. Congrats. Um, all right. We need a new app. Oh, here it is. WebSockets client example. Um, and we just need to grab this Git URL. This is literally all I need to do. Uh, Git remote add Heroku that. I need to add a start script. Okay, so I can I can show you all of this. Um, so, in my package.json, um, we need a start script so that Heroku knows how to start. I mean, I think it'll see the package.json and, and just know, but source.index.js, and we also need to tell it that the, that the main one is source slash index.js, like that. So, um, we're gonna, so I'm in this folder. This is a new Git thing. Um, it has a remote that's pushed up that will push it to uh, the Heroku Git remote. Um, first try, right? <laughs> Git push Heroku master. Uh, you don't need a proc file if you have a package.json. Let's see if it works. Who thinks it's gonna work first try? I have, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I'm not using Zish, this is just bash. Um, you can see my dot files. If you do exclamation mark dot files, you can get a link to them. Build succeeded. It says it was deployed. <laughs> um, can we tail the logs? Yeah, people are connecting. Hey, dude. Literally the first client? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm not mad though. <laughs> All I gotta do is uh, install a bad words filter. Um, so here we go. Um, let's go to coding garden. And then uh, go to real time type stuff and install a package called bad words. be kidding me so uh for those of you that do other things like this where it's exposed to the internet and um potentially bad things could happen bad words is a really nice package there there are other ones um i have had is it, is this one mm, i think this is the one randomly pick names from a dictionary i like that <laughs> oh it's bad dash words i think this is the one wait 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 Yeah, this is the one. I might have just installed malware. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Doc is right. Because the simple fact that I'm now using this library is people are going to try to get around it. But that's okay. Um, do this. We'll create a new filter. 
Wow, wow, where? <laughs> uh, right here, we'll create a filter. Um, and then whenever someone sets their name, we'll do uh, filter.clean. Yeah. Array of random words with a random index. We could do that. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to show my screen. And if anything bad happens, uh, you won't be able to see it. But if you're on the web page, you will be able to see it. Um, a Twitch OAuth is the only solution now? No, 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 no. Okay, so when somebody sets their name, which is right here, this is all we got to do. We'll say filter.clean with their specific name. Um, and really, we want to check to make sure that their name is a string too. If the type is set name, and uh, and there's a data object, and the message object dot data dot name, the type of it is a string. So here's the thing. I didn't write the code this way before because I didn't expect that people were going to try to break it. But now that people are trying to break it, I have to do things like this. I have to make sure that, uh, and actually let's use, uh, um, I have to make sure that the I have to, the data is in the right format. So uh, data is there. It has a name property, um, all that good stuff. And then um, we can pass in the placeholder too. This is what this is what I like to do. I mean, you know, it's 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 the nature of the of the situation. You have, um, like, I am I'm getting a lot of attention right now because I'm I'm live on Twitch, and uh, some people might not like that attention. Or they want to uh, do bad things <laughs> to me because of it. Wait, when did we bring in JSON? That doesn't need to be there. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this without testing, um, and it's all gonna work. Make it work. Uh, Git push Heroku master. Though, uh, oh, thank you, uh, Hima de Panda. <laughs> Um, for those of you that did go to the website, did you see lots of names on it? Did you? I can try to break it. Just don't try to break it. Let's at least see it working for a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, I'll post it in just a second. So let's see. Let's see if it works. There are so many of you, or at least there's somebody with a bunch of, of uh, like random connections. <laughs> uh, somebody might have written a script, and they might also have a, um, what do you call it? A, um, uh, a, a botnet, a, a collection of, of things. So I'm going to show it for a split second. It's working. There, are, there are people connecting, and they're setting their names. Um, but that's about all I'm going to show you because there's probably some bad things in there as well. Um, so that's it. I have to go. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, yeah, there is no limit on the string name right now. You could send any any length of string you want. Yeah, so look at this. We just got a bunch of connections. It's very possible that this is someone spinning up a bunch of instances inside of VPNs and, such, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, so um, so here's the thing. I'll, um, I'll, I'll mention really quick um, just in terms of, well, first of all, if you're spamming my server and you're trying to cost me money, just let it be known that it's free. I'm not paying anything for that Heroku instance, so you're not you're not hurting me. Um, we can look at the um, the metrics potentially, or activity, resources. I don't know. It'll show me graphs. It'll show me graphs here, but I don't have to pay any money because it's a free instance. Um, okay, I will say this: if you're gonna do this at home. And you are going to use Node.js. You should probably use something like Socket.io. Um, it it's, it um, it makes all of the message sending and event parsing all of that much much easier. So use something like Socket.io. I'll mention that. Um, if you're interested in this kind of thing, um, check out coding.garden/videos. I have a lot of videos on doing real time stuff. So if you just search for Socket, uh, this one is is for like absolute beginners. Real time sockets. So real time fun with Socket IO. Uh, I paired with a noob and we made a super basic website where anybody that went to the web page you could see their mouse moving on the page. So you can check that out. Um, is it New Year's Day? Is powered by web sockets. Dung Hero is powered by web sockets. Um, so all of these things. 
uh, you can learn learn more about WebSockets. Uh, and specifically, I use Socket.io in those videos. Now, we didn't get to touch on the other types of ways of doing these things. I will say WebSockets is the de facto way of doing it. Like if, if you're writing an application and it's uh, running in one of the browsers that supports it, uh, use WebSockets. Um, if if you can't, then you can do something like long polling. The nice thing about uh, Socket IO though is it implements that behind the scenes for you. So if WebSockets aren't supported, it'll use long polling. Um, I do have to go, but uh, let, I'm, I'm, let me. Uh, it's down. It's undown. Yeah, and that's fine. Like I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I didn't say this was production ready, and I didn't say we were gonna be able to handle all of the trolls. Uh, but what I want to show you really quick is how something like long polling might work. Really fast, production, really simple. <laughs> so um, long polling actually just uses HTTP requests. So let's say we have the uh, the client and we have the, uh, the server like this and like this. And so um, I showed you earlier in this diagram, the client makes the request, the server sends the response. Long polling works like this. The client sends the, re the, the, the request. This is like a get request to, um, I don't know, like RT for real time. The server, instead of immediately responding, the server keeps this connection open and it, and it waits for things to happen. And then if uh, something does happen, it, does, it just does an HTTP response, like 200 status code uh, with some like some body of information. Um, and then after the client receives the response, it opens up a new HTTP request. This is another get just slash real time. And then the server just waits for something to happen. If nothing ever happens, it still will respond to close it and then the client will reopen it. So this is what's known as long polling. Basically, they're just using the fact that an HTTP request does not have to happen or the response doesn't have to happen immediately. And so they just keep the initial connection open. Um, now, that's very different from a bi-directional communication right, or bi-directional connection where the server can send and receive things from all many different clients as well. And it's, and it's not necessarily a nested request. If you think about it, it's just like, you could write code that does this. You could write an express requ uh, re request handler that doesn't immediately say like res.json. It could wait. It could wait for something. And then after that happens, then it could say res.json. And that's kind of the same thing as being able to send events uh, to the client. Yeah, I, I, have, I have no doubt the app crashed. So some, somebody wrote a script uh, or they, they fired up their, their botnet. That's fine. It worked for the few seconds that it was on stream. Uh, I, I, like server sent events, I'm not super familiar with. That might actually just be long polling. I didn't get to talk about WebRTC. This is actually peer-to-peer -peer connections of clients inside of the web browser. And because it is a bi-directional uh, connection between clients, that can be real time as well. Um, and then there's also the push notification API that exists in web browsers where you can actually get a unique token and send events to clients. There's a lot of ways to do it. It's a lot of, lot of ways to do it, but um, that is real-time communication. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, hopefully you all learned a little bit of something, which, is, which was uh, uh, a thing. We got a lot of follows. I'm not gonna be able to acknowledge them, but I appreciate you. You'll see your name in the credits. So uh, check out the raid messages. If you type exclamation mark raid in the chat, you'll get a link to this. If you are a sub, uh, this is your raid message. If you are not a sub, this is your raid message. Oh, you're welcome, Kyra. <laughs> Um, Saw so says I learned how little I actually know. Well, uh, you know. <laughs> well, we'll we'll find somebody to raid. Uh, wherever we go, be nice. Show them lots of love. Drop a follow if you like what they're doing. I'm gonna go to work. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Uh, was it Mitz? It was Mitzik, right? That asked the initial. Yeah. Thank you to Mitzik for asking the initial question. Um, and tune in. I'm gonna say Wednesday morning. I think I'm actually gonna move code katas to Wednesday morning. We'll see. Check the, check the schedule, join the Discord if you want updates. Uh, thank you for being here. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here is this.